is the typical, um, it's just a typical trad climbing mission. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not been the best, but we've been assured by all the different weather forecasts that it is going to get better and it's going to clear. And um, it's never, it never rains on the west coast of Scotland, you know that. We're off to climb a route which was first climbed 75 years ago. So it's a sort of anniversary ascent of a route called Southwester Slabs. It's blowing an absolute hoolie outside and I hope that the weather gets a wee bit better uh, than it is just now by the time we get over there. Today, rain, 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 rain. Tomorrow, sunny. Mm -hmm. And we're going up there, underneath there, and then up there, ping! And then you can either carry on up the ridge to the top, or you can traverse around and come oh, down Oh, I see. Here. And that granite does look amazing, doesn't it? This is quite majestic. Do any of us have any red socks? I actually do. Can you bring them for tomorrow? <laughs> uh, so, first ascent. September 3rd, 1944, Southwester Slabs. A great find, paving the way for a splendid collection of routes on these marvellous slabs. After the rigours and bog trotting of Glen Rosa, rest your sweaty body and admire the sweeping symmetry of the Rosa Pinnacle, the lower west wall which compromises a vast sea of overlapping slabs. Stroll through the boulders, then up to a groove system where the slabs merge into the broken rock of the green hollow to the left. Here the main course begins. Please don't rush. Savour the perfect slabs. Delight in the rough, textured grooves and sharp edged flakes. Things are amazing. Good things. Classic rock, hard rock, extreme rock. Whenever I get on declining, I think I got extreme rock after a couple of years because you know, that's what you thought you were. I'm an extreme sort of guy. I think back then kind of looked a little bit like this, you know, it wasn't, didn't look like it is today. I used to love looking at these books. And certain images would stick in your mind. For one route in particular, Southwest of Slab, this one here. I know this route was done in 1944, incidentally, the year the BMC was formed. A lot of major clubs came together to get it an umbrella organisation for these climate club, Alpine club, FRCC, other ones like that, to give them a political night and sort of, in that world, changing world, rights to protect access, to look after climbers, to fight for their interests. And in a way that hasn't changed. But I bet you to go up that piece of rock, you're connecting very strongly with the people who first did it experience, because they won't have changed. People are doing in 1944 is exactly the same as people are doing today. And it's not the past doesn't separate us, it's just in a way it brings us together. Just being in this amazing rock world and what this is doing to you as a person. So, yeah, climbing is all sorts of things. Climbing has changed, BMC's changed, the world's changed, politics has changed, the weather's changing. But imagine that. You can still go and do Southwest Slab and feel the rock exactly as it was in 1944, 75 years ago. Isn't climbing amazing? It feels quite a wild and remote place. It's very beautiful. It's very still. There's no signs of human activity up here, pretty much like it would have been done 75 years ago. I guess this is how uh, rock climbing started and I think it's something that's been quite forgotten. It's very alien, the indoor plastic world of climbing and this climbing couldn't be more opposite really, but this is sort of where it began. We forget that nowadays, we want a quick fix. Yeah, well, rock climbing started in the mountains um, using traditional techniques, as it's called, which is placing gear and then using your rope, as in those days was hemp rope, to climb and make progress. Hi, hi. 
It's really interesting actually talking to other international climbers when you say they're from Britain. They're actually very jealous of our heritage and that, that they see trad rock climbing absolutely being developed in Britain. The BMC is the representative body for climbers, hill walkers, mountaineers in England and Wales. I think it's been a great history of access work and campaigning and lobbying, right from the, the Crow Act and the mass trespasses onto Kinder. We need to safeguard that heritage and promote it and look after it so generations actually understand where climbing has come from. What the BMC does, it, it owns several crags, for example, Crook Rise, Alderley Cliff, parts of Tremadoc, um, to maintain the access for climbers. More and more people are seeing the benefits of, on their mental health as well as their physical health of being outdoors, in the mountains, being outside, in touch with the natural environment. I think looking forward, we need to look at how we access mountains and indeed mountains not only in this country but worldwide in a sustainable way. So how do you want to do this? Do you want to lead every pitch? Okie dokie. It's really nice, the friction's amazing. It's just beautiful rock. It's really, um, it's like a sculpture. As the world changes and things become more impacted by us as a sort of human race, it's really important that we stay connected to these wild places and I think climbers are in a great position to be able to really look after them and, and tend for them as, as best they can. argue that it's not important you could argue that it's just an evolution and we don't really need to know where we came from but for me I think it's still really important to remember where these things evolved from and why they evolved in that way but I think it would be a shame if the history and the heritage of where climbing began you know was forgotten uh,